So Louisville comes to Aggieland 7-2 and, and looking for some respect. Well, this is another opportunity for us to uh, elevate our program, uh, to elevate the level of competition, and to defeat a top 10 football team that's never been done in University of Louisville history. We feel people, uh, you know, our respect has gone down a little bit, and this is a great opportunity for us to get that back up. Louisville may have picked a bad time to come to town. The Aggies got dropped a spot in the national rankings and didn't even play. They're in a conference that doesn't get much respect, and right now they're looking for an example. Texas A&M has three outstanding tailbacks. Greg Hill's a gliding type running back. Bang, will hit the open seam. Rodney Thomas, the second tailback, is more of a power runner. Will punish you in the open field. Will play fullback tonight against Louisville on some plays. And the third tailback, Leland McElroy, may be the best of all of them. The Texas Aggie defense, the wrecking crew, not just a nickname, but a 10-year tradition of a dominating group established by guys who played in the pros, guys like John Roper, Aaron Wallace, Marcus Buckley, and now their legacy inspires a new leader. It's an honor to play for the wrecking crew. We come out there and we try to wreck the opposing team's offense. We do the best we can as a family, as a brother. We know that each one of us is going to have the other person's back, so we don't have anything to worry about when we go out there. That's why we play together so well. Before there were airbags, fuel injectors, big block V8s, fins, rack and pinion steering, wipers, radios, or even steering wheels, Kelly Springfield was building tires. Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Now, the most advanced motor oil in Quaker State history comes with the biggest rebate in Quaker State history. Get a $4.20 cashback rebate on new advanced formula Quaker State. That's $4.20 cashback. Hurry, see your Quaker State retailer before November 30th. ESPN's presentation of CFA College Football is brought to you by new advanced high-tech formula, Quaker State Motor Oil. It's formulated for today's high-tech engines. College Station, Texas, home of the Fighting Aggies of Texas A&M, and tonight they take on the number 20 Cardinals of Louisville, the Aggies ranked number 10 in the nation. Hi, everybody. I'm Rod Franklin, and welcome once again to CFA Primetime here on ESPN. Now, unfortunately, there is another story that has taken precedence over our ball game tonight. So quickly, before we talk football, Texas A&M for the past 11 months has been under investigation by the NCAA. The charges are youngsters, student athletes, receiving money from jobs where work was not performed. The students came forward and admitted that it had happened. The, they were suspended for last year's Cotton Bowl game and then for early games this year. The students paid back the money and also their Cotton Bowl rings from last year were taken away. In the morning, R.C. Slocum and an administrative group from Texas A&M will get on board a private plane and fly to Kansas City to go in front of the NCAA. Yesterday, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk with R.C. Slocum about the investigation by the NCAA. I think the thing that, uh, that's been most disappointing to me is that uh, we have worked, everybody at Texas A&M, starting from our administration uh, all the way down to the coaches, uh, have worked extremely hard uh, to try to have a program that would be a model program and be one that, uh, that people would look at, that the NCAA would look at with pride and say, this is, this is how you run a college program. And, uh, and uh, they're winning games, they are successful, but they're doing it by the rules. And, and the most disappointing thing to me is that that has been questioned. R.C. Slocum yesterday, one of the things that must be proven by Texas A&M is that there was not a lack of administrative control by the university. So tomorrow they fly to Kansas City. This has been going on for 11 months, and the word is that it will take still another month or six weeks for Texas A&M to receive some sort of verdict by the NCAA. Now, let me bring in my partner, and we talk football. Mike Gottfried, as usual, joins me on the telecast. Mike, Louisville 
looking for more respect. They're seven to two, and they have a quarterback by the name of Jeff Brom that unless you play them or see them on a regular basis, you don't know that much about him, but I don't think he gets the national attention that probably he should. Ron, you're right. He's a solid quarterback, and what helps him is he benefits from being in the offense of Howard Snellenberger. It's a pass offense, but tonight he has great vision. He's going to need it against this Texas A&M defense. He has to have a big game. Adrian Karsten, as usual, is our third member on the telecast. He is down on the sideline, and Adrian, let's get an update from you. Well, Ron, the potential X factor in tonight's game becomes the weather. Now, not so much the pair chance or the percentage of rain, only 40% now at kickoff. It's the wind, Ron, currently blowing at 50 miles per hour right to left, but it's been uh, going to be gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Now, remember, a m owns the number one punt returner and kickoff returner in the nation. Expect their production to be cut, but maybe more importantly, it's Jeff Brown, Louisville's quarterback, very much the passing quarterback. He's got to throw into this win for half the game. Howard Schnellenberger, ninth year at Louisville, 46, 50, and two this season, seven and two for the Cardinals. And across the way, R.C. Slocum, look at those numbers through five years, 46, 11 and one this year, Texas A&M, seven and one, the only loss coming against the Oklahoma Sooners. But Atulius will kick it off from the 35-yard line, and Aaron Bailey is the man deep. And as usual, they are standing and cheering here at College Station. We are underway. Kenan Sounds, and Eklund is out of the back of the end zone. So, the starting lineups brought to you by Russell Athletic. For the Louisville Cardinals, Jeff Brom, you will enjoy watching him throw tonight. He needs to get off to a good start, coaches say. When he does that, he gets into the groove very well. Aaron Bailey is the man they would most like to get his hands on the football out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. And the offensive front, they have only six offensive linemen here with them, but the best is Dave DeBold. First down, gives it to Dawkins. And he will take it straight ahead for a couple as we meet the defensive starters from the wrecking crew. Sam Adams, big number 95. You heard from him. Uh, good bloodlines. His daddy played and played a long time in the NFL. The linebackers, they're active. Solari, probably the guy that uh, is as big a playmaker as the Aggies have this time around. And in the secondary, many say an All-American and will go early in the draft. Aaron Glenn, he's out of Aldine, Texas, just north of Houston. Good look at Aaron Glenn. Brown rolls the pocket slightly, throws the pass, has it complete. Aaron Bailey with the receiving at the 34-yard line. Ray Mickens is the man who makes the stop. The job ahead for the Louisville offense tonight. There's only been one touchdown scored against AM here at AM this year. It was scored by SMU late in the ballgame. Sam Adams, 6'4", 269 pounds, he's a junior, two Letterman, Cy Creek, his own. He goes with the running play, Dawkins, there is nothing there. 58, Lance Teichelman, the nose guard, is the first man to come through, and Lance hits him pretty good, and he's a senior. Austin Westwood is where he hails from. Mike, what makes Brahm so difficult to take advantage of? The size, first of all. He has good size. He's strong in his lower body. He's tough to bring down. And now, especially putting him in the shotgun, he gets a better look at the defense, more time to throw. Snap way over his head. Brahm in retreat into the end zone. Can he throw it away? Yes. Well, you talk about cool under pressure. And you could see that he had an offensive player. Chris Fitzpatrick was in the vicinity. We well, talk, you're, you're right about a heads up play because when that happens to you, if you're a kicker, you always tell the kicker when the ball goes over your head, punting the football, just kick it out of the end zone. We'll take the two point safety. But Jeff Brown is smart enough to know he's got a little bit of time, buy some time, and then throw the ball away, save the two points, and save the poor field position. <laughs> Big play by Louisville. 
And what he'd most like to do right now probably is to get his heart back up underneath his uh, shoulder pads. Third down, and Louisville needs the 44-yard line. Roll the pocket, pressure was on. Gets by, and this time will not. Shorter is the man who finally gets the sack, number 56. Well, Jason Atkinson was the first man to chase after Jeff Brom. And the idea for Louisville tonight is to roll the pocket, not let Jeff Brown sit in the drop back action. But Antonio Shorter, who a lot of people think reminds him of Marcus Buckley, the sack leader here at Texas A&M a few years ago, makes the tackle. Well, keep an eye on number 31, Aaron Glenn, senior from all the Nimitz. Brandon Brookfield will kick it away for the Cardinals. Line drive kick, but it is away from Glenn, and it will not be a returnable ball. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line. So let's take a look at the starters on offense for Texas A&M. Corey pulling at quarterback, but Greg Hill, he was one of the suspended players, but he is back and roaring away. Number 27, he will open a tailback. The wide receivers, Tony Harrison, he's the best, the leading receiver for the Texas Aggies, and up front, the man that they depend on as far as being most consistent is Chris Dawson, the uh, center out of San Antonio. Where's number 68? Sophomore out of Deer Park. Mike, very steady. It fits in this offense well, doesn't it? Pass to Hill. Puts a head down, and you can see with an aid from his offensive lineman. will take it for five, and here's the starting lineup on defense for the Louisville Cardinals. Jim Hanna doesn't get the attention that Joe Johnson does, but as the coaches say, keep an eye tonight because 95 will be around the football all evening. And much is the same situation for Ben Sumter. Uh, his head coach last night said, just see how many tackles he'll make because he's always around the football. And in the secondary, one of the leaders nationally in interceptions, Anthony Bridges. Moultrie, Georgia, his home, and he has seven pickoffs on the season. Rodney Thomas. Puts a head down to the second effort. He may have picked up the initial first down of the night. His Brown is down at the bottom of the stack. Ty Smith, when I talked to him, the defensive coordinator of Louisville, he said he thought AM would come out and try to throw the ball a little bit. They've been considered a, a, a running type offense, and he feels like that they have to try to establish the pass against his Louisville defense, as you see, Ty. Mike, one of the reasons for the cheer is Leland McElroy, number 34 who was a redshirt freshman from Beaumont Central, has come into the lineup for Texas A&M, and he will join Rodney Thomas. Leland McElroy has proven that he may wind up being one of the best that A&M's ever had here. There you see why. He can move it with the quick steps and also can run with power. Anthony Bridges makes the stop. Take a look at these three backs, Mike. Three solid backs, 5.3 on the hill as far as yards per carry. Thomas, 5.1, and McElroy, 7.9. Rick Clay coming up right here, Ron. They caught Louisville sleeping. McElroy, one man to beat, steps out of bounds. That's a swinging gate play in Texas A&M. I've watched them for the last three years. They like to run it. What they do, Ron, to set it up, they run the play before into the short side of the field in front of the Louisville bench. They want the Louisville defense to have to look back to their coaches. And while they're looking to their coaches, the quarterback will get up, just snap the ball to Leland McElroy, and they caught Louisville sleeping. And Mike, you make a great point in the fact that they set it up running toward the visiting bench, and you're standing there looking at your position, coach, and all of a sudden, bam, the ball is snapped. and it was Hannah along with Kendall Brown who comes up quickly and Joe Johnson to make the tackle. When you watch Texas A&M on tape and in their other ball games, when they get in this area of the field, they like to throw fade patterns into the corners of the end zone. Brian Mitchell, number 18, Tony Harrison, number three. So don't be surprised if they do go to the fade on this play. 
No score, but the initial possession of the night for Texas A&M, and they have a second down. Change in the play because of too deep coverage. Hill caught to the ankles. That's a nice defensive play, and it's 95 Jim Hanna who is there to make the tackle on him, and also you see 94 Joe Johnson. Kendall Brown was also in on the play, and there's an injury on the field. And Hannah is shaken up. He is down at the 12-yard line. <laughs> the give to Greg Hill, number 27. The blocking, Kendall Brown, number 85, in on the play. Jim Hanna. Good penetration by the Louisville defense. Because of Corey Pulling's mobility, you would think here, Ron, in a definite passing situation now, still possibility of the fade but also with the ball in the right hash you might get a sprint out to the left where you get a run pass situation for number four Corey Pulling. Now the numbers on Texas A&M inside the 20 this year 43 possessions 32 touchdowns and seven field goals. We go under 10 minutes to play opening quarter. And the Aggies now with a third down and they need the one and a half yard line. same play all three would run it differently McElroy showed you again right there why that extra step of quickness and power really makes him special Venetulius knocks home the extra point and as we go to commercial let's take a, another look at McElroy and the touchdown pass we'll look at it when we ESPN's presentation of CFA football is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Sony. Nothing unleashes the power of music like Sony. Well, midnight yell practice. Last night, uh, the Aggie faithful gathered here for yell practice. This happens every Friday night for a home game. The band and the yell leaders preparing the fans for the next day's game. Last night, the crowd of around 25,000 on hand, and they have had as many as 40,000 or so to show up for yell practice on Friday evenings before their ball games. In fact, I would be greatly surprised that uh, a week from Wednesday, the night before the Thanksgiving affair against Texas, if they don't have it, at least that many folks here. Terry Venetulius will tee the ball up at the 35 and kick it away to Aaron Bailey. And Mike, on the opening drive, you have to say that uh, the Aggie offensive coaches need to be gleaming right now. They were extremely impressive. He kicks that out of the back of the end zone. And here's the key play on that drive, Ron. 25 yards. But you see Louisville right here. They were in the huddle looking over at the calls. The quarterback, Corey Pulling, is standing right there. He just snaps the ball, and all the AM players are lined up over here. Now Leland McElroy is able to get good blocking from his team, offensive team, and take it for 24 yards. Here's the touchdown. Now they move Leland McElroy out to a receiver, number 34, to the middle screen for the touchdown. So as Louisville comes to the line of scrimmage, they're now down 7 0. And a shotgun formation for the Cardinals. Ron steps up and drills his pass complete, but Dawkins is only going to have a couple of yards. When, when, you, when you coach against a ball club this late in the season, and when they have an open date, you have to worry about gimmick plays because they have longer to prepare the gimmick plays. And I wouldn't be surprised if we do not see two or three more during this ballgame against Howard Snellenberger. Mike, of the 56 yards in the drive, McElroy accounted for 45 of them. Danny Patterson with the 48 comes in as the fullback. Dawkins with the carry, though, breaks off one tackle and fights his way out to the 30, and it's very close to a first down as Hendricks 
is holding on for dear life there. Talked about the open date while you're practicing uh, for the open date. Howard Snellenberger was getting ready for Tennessee, so he couldn't worry about AM, and that's the uh, sometimes the disadvantage of your playing Tennessee, and AM's enjoying their chance to get some gimme plays ready for you two weeks later. No doubt about that. And you also get some folks healthy that have got some uh, bangs and bruises. Pitch goes to Patterson. Tries to turn the corner. You see Atkinson, number 43, grabbing from behind, and also Antonio Shorter, number 56. When you play against Texas A&M defensively, especially in passing situations, you have to make sure you block Steve Solari, number 94, and Antonio Shorter, number 56. What they'll do is they'll rush from the outside real hard and then put a slow read by the defensive tackles looking for Jeff Brown to scramble. Always somebody prepared to spy on Jeff Brown so he doesn't take off the ball. Primary was not there. Looked for a secondary receiver. And Asher, his tight end, is the man that he wanted. Ron, now Steve Kenny comes on the field. He's number 36 who will be the extra defensive back. Now, the idea for Texas A&M now in this series is that Louisville has two key receivers, Ralph Dawkins, Dawkins, the running back, number 22, Jamie Asher, the tight end, number 37. One of those two players on this play should be doubled up by Steve Kenny. So there'll be two on, and it will be Ralph Dawkins. Now, Dawkins, look for him to be doubled on this play. and almost intercepted. And of course, the minute the ball is tipped, as Junior White got a hand on it, uh, everybody's fair game. All the pass interference is off. And the other thing that happens when you're on the road if you're the University of Louisville is this crowd is so into the defense here. They, they've been spoiled by the great defenses they've had the last 10 years here, and the crowd just thrives on defensive play, and they just get into the ball game with this defense. Yep, they really do. You could see the numbers on Aaron Glenn as Brookfield will have to kick into the stiff breeze. They kick to him again, the nation's leader. This one off the side of his foot. It's going to bound and take a Texas A&M bounce just shy of the 46-yard line. Only 21 yards in the kick, so let's take a break. Aggies with momentum. To, to another level, you feel like you're floating on air. The competition is so thick and so tight that you can cut it with a knife. National championship game between one and two is nothing compared to this. Well, the Sam Adams of Texas A&M talking about what I alluded to just a while ago, and that is one week from Thursday evening, we'll be right back here in College Station for the annual gathering, and this will be the 100th time under this flag right here of this great state that A&M and Texas will have met on the gridiron. Lots of history. Again, a century of it. Play action on top, just too far. Great fake by Corey Pulling. Another key play where they're going to try and drive a stake through Louisville here early. They went for the home run, but this is a great fake by Corey Pulling. You're going to watch the fake by number four. Puts the ball on his back, now just nonchalantly steps back, has Brian Mitchell open, number 18 against Anthony Bridges, just overthrew the football. Excellent fake. Well, as Adrian mentioned, we have not just a wind, a gale blowing from the south, and it was just, just a pad, as you could see, overthrown, and I'm sure the wind didn't help. Drop play with Greg Hill. Got a blocker in front. Terry Gwynn will come up from the secondary to make the tackle, but it's going to be a gain of about seven on the play. Anthony Bridges, the corner for Louisville, who Ty Smith, the defensive coordinator, says is the best he's ever coached, really made a good play on that because he was being blocked, was able to come off to help on the tackle on Greg Hill. Sharp, along with McKeon in the ball game, as the Aggies go with two tight ends on the third down and short situation. Seven to nothing, AM leads. We go under seven minutes left to play opening quarter. Well, look how deep the tailback in the eye formation. Hill was set up eight yards behind the center. 
lot of room to have fish. Well, you're right, Ron. And the reason you stack you stack him eight yards back is because there's not a fullback, so he may have to cut back. So you want the ball deep enough to him that he can cut back across the center, or if he sees his blocking front side, he can take it outside. That's the reason he's that at that depth. Louisville with a player shaken up and down at the 47-yard line. Leonard Ray, number 97, a senior out of Port St. Joe, Florida, is the injured Cardinal. Win a factor, you have to think as a coach that you want to use the win to your benefit. When you have it to two quarters, you want to air it out, and that's exactly what AM did on first down. Mike, we've talked about before, rain is one thing. And, uh, and it can be a problem, but wind sometimes is an even bigger problem. And we had intermittent rain as the teams came out and warmed up a little bit today. So there's moisture on the turf. And it, I think we may see some slipping and sliding in errant passes tonight. Well, you, you talk about the wind, Ron, and again, when you have it at your back, just like in this situation right now, one of the things, if you're Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator, you have to think first down's a good down to throw against Howard Snellenberger in the Louisville defense. Possibility of a corner route here. Fake the post because they were open on the post. Now come back with the corner route. Let's keep an eye on that. So we're going to take a break as they continue to attend to the injured player. We'll be right back. Seven to nothing, Texas A&M on top with 6.46 left to play in this opening quarter. And the Aggies with a first down and they have the ball just inside the Louisville 38 yard line. Corey Pullen, the sophomore from Deer Park. Play action. Gets it out in the flat. Somebody blew a coverage. Thomas wide open. He'll take it for the big gainer. And another AM first down inside the 20 of the 15. Well, exactly what Ty Smith told me last night was his concern is exactly what's happening. Texas AM on first down is coming out, throwing the football on first down, trying to establish that. And that's bad news for Louisville because this is a running football team. Corey Pulling finds. Rodney Thomas, who was lined up at fullback again on the little bootleg play, and he's wide open. And Mike, a, another situation. Cliff Gross has been shaken up a bit, so they've had an opportunity with the off week to work Thomas at fullback as well as tailback. Straight ahead with the run this time, and it'll go for a couple of yards. Hannah back in the ball game, and uh, Jim makes the tackle. And we're glad to see that Leonard Ray, who was injured just a moment ago, is. Uh, healthy enough to come back into the lineup for the Cardinals back in the fade area again if the last time Louisville when we talked about it, Louisville come out in a two deep coverage which is not a good coverage to throw the fade if they get one on one on the outside they like the fade route Thompson Hill in the backfield again as you look at number three Tony Harrison play action in the flat Looks as though that that might be there all night long. He is inside the five-yard line, and Thomas has it with a first and goal, Texas A&M. Watson on the tackle. Same play, Rodney Thomas sneaks out of the backfield from the fullback position. The ball faking in the backfield is holding the linebackers. You see the fake, you see Rodney Thomas sneak out, but the linebackers are getting trapped because of the ball handling of Corey Pulley. Darius Watson, number 43, makes the tackle. Rodney Thomas out of Groveton, Texas. This time, Cliff Gross comes back into the lineup at fullback. Joining Greg Hill. First down, Texas A&M. First and goal, they already lead 7-0. Greg Hill. Gross in front, throws the block. He'll walk in, touchdown Aggies. Well, there was two key blocks on that, Ron, and there's nobody around. And Cliff Gross, you're right, number 33 made a clean, clean block. Greg Short, number 86, was blocking in the secondary, and Greg Hill could have waltzed in that end zone. Good look at Greg Sharp, the tight end out of San Antonio. Churchill, who also threw a good block on the play. Terry Venatulius to attempt the extra point. He's got it, and a 
six. The Aggies 14 to nothing already. Two key blocks run. Opens this play wide open. As the play starts, Cliff grows the fullback. Stop it right there. Cliff, there's a block by Greg Sharp. He's got that man pinned now. Cliff Gross is going to seal him inside. And now it's a race to the corner. It's wide open for Greg Hill. Lost, Louisville lost leverage. Could not play the outside play. Terry Quinn, number 40, was blocked by Cliff Gross for the touchdown. Well, the key block, as you can see, was by Sharp. I mean, he's the one that sealed the one player that they had to have that could have gummed up everything. And then with the block by Gross, the fullback, and it was just as though you would draw it up on the board. Well, the problem for Louisville right now is that AM is coming out on first down, establishing the throw, and then all of a sudden, now it's second and third down, they're pounding them with the running game. But Louisville needs to keep their offense on the field and keep their defense, give their defense a little rest here in the first quarter. And the tough thing about it is if you're on defense for the Louisville Cardinals, you got this guy plus 20, uh, Thomas. Plus 34, Leland McElroy, and they just keep getting fresh legs in the ballgame, just one right after another, and all are quality, quality running back. This one will be returned by Bailey. Big opening up the middle, and finally stopped at the 37. And let's check in with Mike Tirico. Mike, what do you have for us? Ron, a highlight we didn't get a chance to show the folks earlier at the vet. Darren Studstill of West Virginia threw for three touchdowns, two to Ed Hill. West Virginia plays Miami. Battle of Big East in conference unbeatens. And we hear, Ron, that Jake Kelchner will be healthy enough to play quarterback for in that game. Well, that is indeed good news because, you know, when you get two teams together like that, you want to play the best against the best. You don't want to, one of the clubs being hampered by not having their best, and that is good news. Anthony Shellman comes in at tailback in the 29 for Louisville. Shelman gets the handoff, and he's going to be denied the line of scrimmage. Eric England, one of the first men to come up and make the hit. And let's go down and check in with Adrian Karsten. Ron, we are seeing the results of that defense that Coach Godfrey described a few moments ago. AM is calling this a clamp technique. Now, Jeff Brown has a great reputation as a quarterback who can really feel the pressure. Back to this uh, play, Ron, and give you the details here in just a moment. Okay, Adrian. Stay at home as Brom delivers incomplete. And here comes a flag from deep down field. I think Aaron Glenn is going to be called for the pass interference on Bailey. Looks like it was interference on Aaron Glenn. And let's check back in with Adrian. Well, Ron, my point was that Brown can usually feel the Fix pressure the very well, but this clamp technique that AM is coming real hard the first three steps with, particularly on the outside, has him guessing. He was complaining to his coaches on the bench. He doesn't know if they're coming hard with the rush or holding back, therefore forcing him to take longer with his decisions. Brown zings the pass. Incomplete. Fitzpatrick had his hands on it, but he couldn't bring it in. One of the points that Howard Schnellenberger made last night, Mike, was that he said that Jeff Brown is one of those type of guys. He said he gets into the offense, he gets into a rhythm, and if we provide him with protection, and he gets better and better as the game goes on. But if he gets off to a slow start, that he is capable of not finding that rhythm. Throws a post round incomplete at the 20, and he had Bailey. It looked like Louisville was moving a little bit in the offensive line. Ray Mickens had the cover on Aaron Bailey. Looks like the call is going to be against AM. Somebody might, may have lined up or moved offside for AM. It's definitely against AM, Ron. Offside, defense, 
Repeat second down. Lloyd Dale is our referee tonight. Good look at the crowd here at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. 3.56 left to play opening quarter. And the Aggie faithful have not been disappointed so far. And it looks like the Aggies almost lined up offside again. The running play will go for maybe one, and that's it. Sam Adams makes the tackle, and let's look at him isolated. Number 95, Sam Adams. You see his ability to come out of his stance and take that first step was the key. He just beat the block of uh, Jermaine Williams on that play. 6 4 269. One of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award. Has it completed? Fitzpatrick with some room to run. Will have the Louisville first down. Mickens finally puts the stop on him. Steve Solari on a blitz, number 94. Chris Fitzpatrick, number 23, was able to pick him up. And the vision again of Jeff Brown. To get the ball to Chris Fitzpatrick. Number 94, Steve Solari on the blitz. Chris Fitzpatrick in the flat. Completion for Jeff Brown. Again, because he's in the shotgun, the vision is a little bit better for him. Flags are down. Pass for the end zone. And great defensive play by Glenn at the last moment. And the game then jumped off sides again. I think what's happening, Ron, I don't know this for a, a fact, but it looks to me what happens sometimes when you get a team in the shotgun for a lot of plays that the center will look back to the quarterback. And as soon as he sees the quarterback's ready, he'll take his head so he can see the defense, and then he times it up 1,001, he snaps it. Looks to me like Texas A&M's trying to time up that snap, and that's why they're all sides twice. They're counting the same way. As soon as his head goes back down, they're counting 1,001. Bang, they're gone, and he's a little slow. <laughs> Great numbers on Aaron Glenn. You could see that nice defensive play a moment ago. So first and five for the Cardinals. They go with a running play, and it's Shellman as this play is whistled down and another flag at the line of scrimmage. Start, offense, still first down. You know, both teams having some problems that you normally don't see this far into the season. You know the quiet receiver to this point, Howard Snellenberg has not been able to go to Jamie Asher, the tight end number 37, who's really a good looking tight like end. Him. Oh, I like him a lot. Uh, he's got to be one of the better tight ends in the country. He's been silent so far. 6-3-2-27. Ron going to reverse his field. Now throws and incomplete, and now here comes the play. And I think what the call is going to be, Mike, and maybe we had a better angle than some of the fans who were upset, but I think that Hendricks... Not the pass away, but also think that right hand was right in the middle of the back. They tried to go to Jamie Asher, and I believe you're right, the right hand, but I don't know how you can talk about our angle. We're so high here, everybody's got a better seat than we've got. <laughs> but Michael Hendricks, I believe you're right, number 40. Was trying to guide it with his right hand, right arm. Jeff Brown buys time again. Now watch number 40. Yeah. See him grab a hold of Jamie. Yeah, he's got his Asher, arm. number 37, a good call by the officials. So it is first down, Louisville. They're down 14 to nothing. 2.55 left to play opening quarter. They 
go running play. Fitzpatrick has five, six, and seven yards. And Shorter holding on to him, but a very good quick hitter by Chris Fitzpatrick, the junior from St. Petersburg. Looks like they're going to go no huddle again, Ron. Now, here's the reason they're going to go no huddle. Howard Snellenberger is a master at this. He knows AM substituting nickel people, and he's not going to allow them to substitute. He's going to keep, he's going to let Jeff Brown call his offense. Again, when you're struggling sometimes and you go to a no huddle, sometimes your quarterback can pick you up with some calls. Running play again. Shellman. Ball is loose. And the officials say the play was dead. Sam Adams makes the tackle. And Mike, one of the big aids on this drive for Louisville, four A&M penalties for 31 yards on this drive alone. On that silent snap, that's the penalty. But again, Howard Snellenberger's turned it over his quarterback. Jeff Brom is calling the plays at this point in the football game to keep substitutions off the field. So it's first down Louisville. Line of scrimmage just outside the 10. And the shotgun, Brom. Now running for his life and gets away once, gets away twice, and he will take it to the nine-yard line. That is a great job as White finally makes the stop. Teichelman and England both were in extremely hot pursuit, and he got away. Watching practice yesterday, that's the things the coaches talked about. They said strong lower body. You have to make sure you take him down. Eric England, number 92, misses. Lance Tackleman, number 58, misses. Jeff Brown made that play, his mobility. And Jason Stenson, who is the number two center, but has been moved to that position because of injury, is the man who's down for Louisville. And we would remind you off the top of the telecast, we told you, Howard Schnellerberger said they only brought six offensive linemen to this football game because of injuries. So uh, they can't go much deeper onto the shelf and they're going to have to change some people to positions now. Well, the worry that uh, Howard Snellenberg, if I was coaching Louisville right now, the worry I'd have is I've already snapped one over Jeff Brown's head in the uh, shotgun offense. Now I'm going to bring Chris Hampton off the bench. He's cold. Uh, you know, I may have to get out of the shotgun until I can give him some time to warm up. Mike, we had an opportunity to talk to Jeff Brown about the no huddle offense and how it works for them. It allows uh, our offense to to kick it up an extra notch, kick it into a higher gear, and I'm able to you know to call the plays I think will work. And not only that, uh, you know I can call the plays and have plenty of time to see the defense, and then he, you know then change it if uh, I feel that that's not going to work. Eighth play of the drive coming up. Aggies on top, 14 to nothing. But the Cardinals now with a second down and the ball just inside the 10. Kevin Cooks, their go-to receiver down here. Winds it up, drills, tipped, and intercepted by Hendricks. And that's who they tried to go to, Ron. Kevin Cook, and they doubled him up. They were expecting, expecting him to go to Kevin Cook. Aaron, Kevin Cook, Aaron Glenn with the deflection, number 31. Watch the double here on the go-to receiver. Glenn, first of all, steps inside. Now number 40, Michael Hendricks with the interception. As I talked about early, only one touchdown this year scored against this Texas A&M defense here at home. Well, you can see why so many people have Aaron Glenn on their All-American team. Well, his reaction and pursuit to the football, and although he could not make the pickoff, he tipped it, and then Hendricks gets the steal, and the Aggies stopped what was surely a points drive, at least three points. Texas A&M with a minute 17 yet to air one out with a win at the back. Our sideline has it complete and Mitchell is there. Let's check in again with Adrian Carson. Adrian, what do you have for him? Watching how well Aaron Glenn is playing tonight, Ron. Remember, finalist for the Jim Thorpe Awards, defensive back and obviously the nation's leading punt returner. He actually has a picture of the great Jim Thorpe over at uh, his bed. It's the last thing he looks at before lights out. He says... He wants to be as vocal as Deion Sanders, but as physical as Rod Woodson of the Steelers, another all-pro defensive back and special teams player. Well, that's different. Jim Tharp in the bedroom. <laughs> that's for sure. Touchdown, 44. He turns Smith, the sophomore from the Highlands, and the fullback. And the Aggies move before the snap as the pass is thrown complete to Harrison. And I'm surprised that that play was not whistled down as 
And I'm, Harrison is thrown out of bounds I'm by Bridges. I'm surprised there's not a call here on the sideline, too, because it just threw him into the uh, bench area. But, Ron, thinking again, Bob Toledo, you've, the penalty's going to be against a &M, but you've got 105 on the clock. The wind is a factor when you look at the flags, and he wants to throw the ball as much as he can with the wind at his back deep. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty, replay first down. So the five yards stepped off against AM, and now we have 65 seconds left to play in this first quarter. Look at the flags at the top of the stadium, Ron. Just keep watching that. The, the wind, the factor. There's Bob Toledo, and I know what's th what his thinking is as he stands there calling the plays. I've got another quarter coming up here where it's going to be in my face, so I want to at least get him off me and challenge him deep here just before the uh, quarter. Takes it to Hill. Gets a great pickup block. And now throws across the grain and it's intercepted by Louisville at the 41-yard line. Kevin Gaines. Well, now what you have done is Louisville has the football back, and they're about to get the wind in 56 seconds. There's no doubt. I mean, the last thing you wanted was a turnover, but yeah. you wanted to throw the football. Now Louisville, first down, I'm sure, maybe thinking run to set up and get the win with them, but Corey Pulley going to roll out. See him throw across his body, Ron. He never had anything underneath, and uh, Kevin Gaines, number 18, there's nothing on that football. When you throw across your body a bigger percentage of times, you're going to have an interception and a completion. Gaines come quickly. Look at the numbers on Louisville on takeaways this year. 28 total now. Rahm in first down. He's going to run. He's got an acre. Now it closes up, and he's down at the 33. A shorter comes up, and the hole closed very quickly. But it's a gain of eight. Important to Ron that Jason Stinson, number 77, is back in at center, so they can continue the shotgun offense with the center back in the ball game. Louisville might be very well served right here with the clock ticking down to run one running play here. Try to pick up the first down, let the quarter run out, and then take the win and start throwing all over again. They go with the running play. Dawkins, and he has been a non-factor in this one so far. Larry Jackson steps up to make the hit, and that is going to be the final play of this opening quarter. So Howard Snellenberger, not smiling right now, but his team has a turnover. When we come back, we'll see if they can do something with it. Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten. As you look at the part of this near-capacity crowd at Texas A&M, the Aggies on top 14 to nothing, but they've just turned it over. And the Louisville Cardinals have an opportunity to take a little momentum back. But in the first quarter, it was all AM. Brought the safety up. Now they got an extra man against the run. That's what they go with. And look at the hit by Eric England. Oh, my goodness. They caught him late, Ron. They moved the safety up to give him an eight man front. It was too late for Jeff Brown to get out of the play. Good call by Bob Davey. Wow. You're not going to. Can't see the free safety come up at number five. Junior White moved up late to give him the eight-man front, force him into fourth down. Oh, fourth down are going to go for it. He probably thought he not only got hit by England, but Germany and Switzerland yeah. and Austria and Italy. Now here's where you have to be thinking Ralph Dawkins. From the shotgun, fourth down pass. Here's Clark. Bailey on the receiving end, and what a huge fourth down play by Louisville. That ball was thrown on a rope. He really had something on this football. Jeff Brom with a key completion. Only well, we can see just what we were talking about. When Brom settles in and really gets into his rhythm, and they've had to work hard to teach him how to be a drop back passer, not sprint out of the pocket to run like he did in high school. He really can zip it. Dawkins reverses the field, has five, still fighting inside the 15, and he is close to a 10-yard gain for the Cardinals. Good blocking by the offensive line on that play. 
first down has been a down where they've been throwing the football, so they're now getting good balance. You watch the offensive line. Come off right tackle, number 75, Jermaine Williams is pulling on the play. Good block by 76, Tom Carroll. Second down and short. Atkinson on the blitz, and Shelvin, or let's make it Patterson, has absolutely no place to run. Shorter and Atkinson and combining them to stop. Sam Adams talked about his first step. Very explosive, number 95. Six foot four, 270 pounds, just beats the block and is able to meet Danny Patterson in the backfield. Third down and short for Louisville. AM and a tight running play straight ahead, and Dawkins will have the first down. As Antonio Shorter comes up to make the hit on him, but it's a first and goal at the eight. The play was made by Chris Fitzpatrick, number 23. The fullback with a very good block to spring Ralph Dawkins for the first down. Number 30, 23, Chris Fitzpatrick. There's the block on number 37, Larry Jackson, that opened it up for Ralph Dawkins. Mike number eight, Chris Cotton has come in replacing Atkinson at inside linebacker. Here's a young player, he's only a sophomore, that the Aggies think is going to be very, very good. Short drop, nothing there, going to run. At the five, and tackled at the three by Larry Jackson. Talked about it early, what they'd like to get is a good pass rush out of the outside, spy one of the defensive tackles in the middle to play Jeff Brown, similar to how you play, you know, the fine quarterback at Florida State. Charlie Ward. They're trying to do the very same thing with Jeff Brown, and then they blitz him inside with a tackle, a pass rush, and the outside players spy him. Cook and Ferguson at a wide receiver. It is a second down, and the ball just outside the three. Jeff Brown, senior from Louisville. They go the running play. Dawkins, nothing at left guard. Tries to get outside and is going to be knocked down by Solari for a loss. Steve Solari with a big play again, not allowing Ralph Dawkins to skate outside. Five-yard line run. Again, you think Dawkins, number 22. You think... Tight end Jamie Asher, number 37, working against linebackers. Ralph Dawkins is going to go in the uh, wing set. 14 to nothing. Texas A&M. Brown trying to bring the Cardinals on, and Dawkins had the ball to hit him right in the hand. Flag is down at the three. And that was England who was coming with the pressure. Well, the good thing for Louisville, it's still third down on the false start. And Mike, for what they're doing, actually this gives them a little bit more room. A little more room to work, you're right, Ron. Again, now they tried to go to Ralph Dawkins. He was well covered. Tuck and Ferguson up at the top of your screen. As we zoom in, and Braun sends the pass. It complete to his tight end out of bounds at the one yard line is Asher. And now decision time for Howard Schnellenberger. Well, I don't think there's much of a decision. Howard's on the road behind 14 points. He's going for the touchdown. Jamie Asher, the tight end, working all by himself on this side versus Steve Kenny, the nickelback, number 36, pushes off. He's so big at 6'3, 230 against Steve Kenny, who's 190 pounds. He was able to use his body. Louisville calls a timeout. We'll take it with him. 10-24 after this opening game.
Desk Jet Printers from Hewlett Packard. It's easy to make it happen. Well, the bonfire, one of the great traditions at a tradition-rich school. They begin building it a month into the school year, and the night before the Thanksgiving game against Texas is when that baby will be lit, and that is some kind of pep rally. Ron, a power play here, some type of power play hurdle over the top where Jeff Brown will fake the run, take it naked around one of the sides of the end, but it'll be either power play or Brown. Straight ahead, Shellman. Touchdown, Louisville. One yard run for the touchdown by number 29, Anthony Shellman. Big block, block by Garen Patrick, number 74. And he used the big back, Anthony Shellman, 6'3", 200 pounds. So the turnover by Texas A&M comes back to Hahn. It didn't look like much at the time because of the position on the field where it happened. But then Brom got the wind behind him and showed that with the wind, he is indeed going to be tough. You can't give Louisville, they're too good on offense. You can't give them field position around the 50. Akers with the extra point, and he bangs it home. So we'll take a break. New score, 14 to 7, Texas A&M. Board, 41 yards, 11 plays. Shellman with a touchdown. Mitchell to the near side, and there's McElroy. Number 34, you can see, leads the nation with an average return of 36.1. Now, with this win, well, I don't know if he'll get an opportunity or not. By the way, on the drive by the Cardinals, they used five minutes and 35 seconds. Eight running plays and three passes on the drive. You can see because of the wind that Akers is having to use a holder. Kevin Gaines has come up to lend a hand, or a finger, as it were. Well, what Howard Snellenberger makes a great move on this play. Look at here, first of all, he makes the split by the tight end a little bit larger than he usually is, and then he gets the good block down here. Then the fullback Fitzpatrick and the backside guard will pull through, so they already make themselves a hole to start with before the play. Now look at him open it up, and that's what caused the touchdown. Anthony Shellman, the big back into the score. You can see Solari came from a long distance to grab him from behind, but he had uh, broken the plane by then, so it's 14 to 7. Greg Hill breaks off a tackle, and he'll take it to the 28 as Quinn finally makes the stop on it. Cavallo is the man that he got out of the grasp of. This is what the three backs have done so far tonight. Look in touches. McElroy averaging 15, Thomas averaging nine, and Hill with seven carries averaging six times or six yards every time he touches it. And I would think in this series, Ron, it would be mostly run now. You're going yeah. into the wind, so get the ball in the hands of those three backs. Thomas and Hill in the lineup at the same time. Double headache if you're on defense. Hill again, Thomas blocking for him, and this time nothing doing. Gaines is the man who comes up and makes the uh, initial stick. And let's check in again with Adrian. Well, Coach, uh, Ron, one of the things that R.C. Slocum really likes about using three separate backs back there is because one play actually could, becomes three different plays because of the different styles. I mean, Hill wants to hit the hole right away. Thompson, kind of a straight-ahead guy. McElroy will kind of fluff a little bit and then hit right at you. Say, for example, a draw becomes three separate plays, same diagram, but three different plays because of the different running styles. All right, Adrian, take care of that voice. Pulling, set pressure from behind just as he delivers the pass and is very fortunate that as a flag comes in late, was the ball tipped, though, I think is the big question yeah. here, whether or not that ball was tipped. Well, he was fortunate he didn't get hit and fumble the ball, and it is going to be pass interference against Louisville.
Pressure by Joe Johnson, number 94, 6'3", 250 pound defensive lineman. Corey Pulley with the pressure from the backside. Now the ball was not tipped. Pass interference, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Interference on 56, Johnny Frost. Well, Howard's not real happy about that, and you could hear the customary cheer which comes here at A&M, which is sit down bus driver. There it is again. <laughs> well, he's probably the highest paid bus, bus driver, driver you're going to see. <laughs> and the best dressed. And also a heck of a coach. First down for the, car, for the Aggies as they have it at the 41-yard line. Try to set the screen and they do to Hill. You see one blocker in front and then a nice job defensively by 36 Ben Sumter. Calvin Collins was the lead blocker out on the screen and what makes a screen pass a good play is the quarterback has to be a little bit of an actor. As he drops back he has to give a little ground like he is under pressure and then dump the ball over the rush. Fourteen to seven. If you just joined us, we're about to hit the midway point of this uh, second quarter. Aggies on top by a touchdown. Takes it to Hill and then comes back to this side and nicely played as McKeon made the reception and again it's Sumter who is there on the tackle. Ben Sumter's an active linebacker, 6'2", 224 pounds, senior. And another flag, a little late flag here. You're roughing the passer. Roughing the passer. Defense. 15 yards from the end of the run. I think Fanning is the man that they got, Mike. Check it out. Corey pulling with the fake. The eyes following. His tail back. Jim J. Fanning, number 45. That's who it's called on. Looks like a pretty good hit to me. Now he had released it for a pretty good time, and I assume that's what he was dropping the flag for. 7:51 left in this second quarter. Again, Thomas and Hill both in the in the backfield for AM. Pitch comes to Thomas. This time Hill blocking. Puts a head down, and as you can see, Thomas is the more straight ahead of the runner. He just likes to get his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage and, and take it tough. Well, coming up tomorrow, NFL Sunday night, ESPN coverage of the National Football League comes to you from Southern California. Uh, the Chargers and the Bears. Junior Seau, a two time Pro Bowler in his club, still in the hunt to defend their divisional crown, and a must win for Chicago to have a chance at a wild card. Tomorrow evening, the Bears and the Chargers. Joe Theismann, Mike Patrick, and crew. play gets snuffed by Johnny Frost and you can see that the ball carrier just disappeared as soon as the handoff was made. Frostbite. <laughs> Johnny Frost middle linebacker number 56 red trap and the snap of the ball and stepped up to make the play. Detron Smith. Sophomore out of Lake Highlands number 44 comes into the game at fullback. It's going to be third down Aggies, and they need about three yards to pick up this first. Pressure gets it away, and in and out of the hands of McKeon. And Mike Tirico, let's check in with you one more time. To the WAC, Ron, Fresno State hosting Hawaii. It's 51 degrees, a little cool for the Hawaii players. A little uh, razzle-dazzle here. Charlie Jones. From his split end position, goes the distance, 34 yards, add on a punt return. Fresno leads by 14 in the whack. In the pack, UCLA, Arizona State, defensive struggle in the third. We've got our eyes on it, Ron. I'll tell you what, uh, that would indeed be a shocker. And, uh, I 
have a feeling that our director, Chip Bean, probably is curling his toes right now. With the wind, Sun Devil. With the wind in their face, they're going to go for the fourth down play. McKeon on fourth down gets cracked by Terry Quinn. And the ball will go over. Read the blitz, threw it right on time, but didn't get enough on it. Showed us a timeout. Let's take it with him. 6.09 left until halftime, and the Cardinals hold. Leads by seven. Louisville with the blitz, and number 40, when you do blitz, now he has to move over and take the tight end. Not only does he take the tight end here, he takes his head off. Terry Quinn, number 40, reads the quick pass and delivers the hit and causes the incompleted pass on fourth down. And as you could see, McKeon was moving open and would have had the first down. But boy, he was not expecting Quinn, and he really got wrapped. Defense. Well, you talked about it uh, intermission a little bit today, and M's lost a little momentum. Now it's up to the defense. Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator, probably has the same feeling you have. Now he's going to blitz Jeff Brown, play man coverage on the outside, and try to get his defense moving. On the outside, it's man for man. Jeff Brown checked off, but was not able to make the play. Well, the other thing that the Cardinals have done, they've taken this crowd out of the game somewhat. And this is a tough crowd if you're the opposition. Long for Bailey overthrown. Adrian Carston, let's go back to you. Ron, remember how much we said the wind might play a factor in this game. The pass a little bit long there because of the wind now blowing up to 20 miles per hour. Where Coach Snellenberger told his team, look, guys, we're going to have to win this game in two quarters because every point will probably be scored with the wind at their back. So far, 21 of those points, all the points in this game have been scored just that way. Yeah, that's right, Adrian. And they had five minutes and 59 seconds to work with until uh, halftime. Cardinals two for six on third down conversions tonight. And the line they need to make is just across their own 40. Here comes the blitz in the middle. They pick it up nicely. It's a screen. And Dawkins with a lot of running room. Caught from behind, but he's over midfield. And it's a first down for Louisville. 24 yards. If you'd ever want to draw up a play against the blitz that Texas A&M was going to run on this play, Howard Snellenberger had the great play. What he has is a screen to number 22. You're going to see the blitz coming. Number 22 is going to set up for the screen. Ralph Dawkins, and now three receivers to the right. They're all in man coverage, but what makes the play is the block by Ralph Dawkins. <laughs> He's able to make the quick block, get off, get into the screen, and pick up valuable yardage for Louisville. Now Louisville's all-time leading receiver with 146. And Mike, you're exactly right. He did double chores on that one. In fact, if he doesn't pick up the block, they're never able to get the pass play underway. Well, if he wouldn't have blocked on that, the linebacker would have read the screen. This is Shellman. Tries to get it to the outside, and he does. Inside the 40-yard line, and is out of bounds at the 39. Mickens comes over. Shellman's kind of a long strider, a, a little bit a la Eric Dickerson because he runs tall, and, of course, he has the same number on there. He's an impressive young back. Of course, with the ability of uh, they use Ralph Dawkins so much, you need a backup to Ralph Dawkins because they use him running the football, throwing it. He's a pretty good blocker, so Anthony Shellman is a... An excellent replacement. Bob Davey, defensive coordinator, trying to stop this train in Louisville. Three safeties up now. They're going to run defense. Shellman hit at the line of scrimmage. Sam Adams, number 95, penetrates and makes the tackle almost as soon as the ball was handed off. Junior White, number five, makes this play because he's coming up. Watch the free safety. 
Number five, he'll come up to give him the eighth defender just before the snap of the ball. See him step up now. Now they have eight people, and it's too late for Jeff Brown to check off and get out of the play. So it's third down. And the running play, he's not going to have it. Atkinson steps up into the hole, and Shelvin is knocked down with maybe a gain of a half yard in the play. Well, there's no doubt again Howard Schnellenberger is going to go for it. He had a fourth down a little while ago and uh, made the choice to go for it. He'll go again. He's bringing his, he's bringing his wide receiver tight back in. Uh, Ralph Dawkins and the big back is going out, Anthony Shelman. So I would think, my thought would be it's going to be a pass. Shotgun formation as Dawkins comes over and sets trips to the left side. Fourth down. Quick pass. Overthrown. Asher, he's tied in. Was open, but he just threw it too tall. Too high on the pass. And again, when they re replaced Anthony Shellman, you just figured it was going to be a throw because you're going to keep the big back in and short yardage on fourth down. You run the football. Howard took a chance to throw the ball, and AM stopped him. It's a tight end. Jamie Asher, number 37. You talk about open now. He's open. Ball too high. Michael Hendricks in coverage, number 40. Kevin Byrne checks into the lineup at wide receiver, number 80. And if the name is familiar, uh, Kevin Byrne's dad was, uh, was Jim Byrne. He played at Purdue and also spent a good number of years for the Houston Orders in the National Football League. Kevin's number 80. Pass to the near sideline, and it will be complete to short. Pass complete to number 86, Greg Short. First down success by Texas A&M throwing the football in the first half. Corey Pullock, as you look at his numbers, 8 of 12, 67 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. That interception led to the Louisville touchdown. So the turnover led to seven by the Cardinals in this first half. Try to seal everything off. Pitch to Rodney Thomas. Now look at how Louisville's caught inside. Now it becomes up to number 21, Anthony Bridges, to make the stop. He's able to slow him down until help comes along. <laughs> you can see Watson, and he just butted him out of the way. Finally held on long enough to make the stop. 35-yard run. Good block from his teammate Thomas, and he'll take it down close to the 15 as Anthony Bridges is up from the secondary to make the stop. And the clock moving toward halftime. R.C. Slocum. His ball club moving the ball into the wind the first time tonight. That Either club has had this deep a penetration into the win. Well, I'll take it back. No, Louisville did in the opening quarter and then through the interception. Good ahead of Steve. He'll pick up a couple close to the first down. There's Dewberry down at the bottom of the stack for the Cardinals. Coming up at a halftime, the Delta Fawcett Report. Florida State and Notre Dame will have a recap from South Bend, Auburn, and Georgia. The shootout there in Miami, well, it was a little bit tougher test today than maybe they had anticipated. All of that and more coming up at a halftime. The Delta Fawcett Report. Corey Pulley wants a measurement. He wants to know how far they have to go on third down. 122 on the clock, and the has all three of their timeouts left. 
This is, becomes two down territory to get this first down. Greg Hill time. But Gross comes in at fullback. He's nursing an ankle injury. Cook is not at 100%. But a very tough blocker from the 33. You see him throw the block for Hill, and he'll have the first down. Cabano finally finishes him off. 57 seconds left until the halftime. Tim Cabano. Good block by Cliff Gross. AM's going to use the first of their three timeouts. So we'll take it with them. 57 seconds until halftime. Aggies by seven and threatening. Toyota Leadership Award winners this week are from Louisville. Defensive end Jim Hanna. He's a senior from West Palm Beach, Florida. Majors in finance and has a 3-3 GPA. And from Texas A&M is Jason Atkinson. Already graduated with a degree in civil engineering and a 2-7. He's currently in graduate school majoring in business administration. Toyota proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of these athletes. Corey Pullett with 57 seconds left until the halftime of the ball rest at the 12-yard line, and it's first down. You think roll out to the right side here with the ball on the left hand. They delivered the pass incomplete. It was not catchable. You can see Harrison may be a miss in communication because that was well behind you, Mike. And a good play by Kevin Gaines. Pretty good coverage, but you're right. Ron, I don't know if the wind got a hold of it or what, but it was way behind Tony Harrison. Now you put yourself in a little bit of a bind. You try to, to show him as you see the slant, the ball way behind. Now do you run a, run a play trying to catch Louisville thinking you're going to throw the football, or do you sprint out to the right here? The decisions for Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator. And now Pullett wants to call a timeout. There's a third decision. Time out. So we'll keep it right here. And probably the next question I would ask is the same thing that a lot of Aggie faithful would be asking. And that is, what has happened to McElroy here in the second quarter? Because you remember he had 47 of the 56 yards on that first uh, drive that they took it in very quickly. My friend, you see some of the problems that coaches have. Only one football. That's right. Greg Hill, Rodney Thomas, Leland McElroy. But they could bring him in at a wide receiver. But you're right, he had a very good first quarter but uh, not in the ball game. Boy here's an update on a huge one Arizona State we showed you they were leading three to nothing at the end of the third quarter UCLA has kicked a field goal it is the Sun Devils three and the Bruins three great one going out west and speaking of a great one out west next Saturday here on CFA we will start off our day Tennessee at Kentucky that is a four o'clock Eastern time start and of course that means uh, an opportunity to look at Heath Schuler, the great quarterback for the Tennessee Volunteers uh, what a year he has had 21 touchdown passes for him in Kentucky they have played good football now they had a tough time today and almost got surprised by East Carolina but it's been a good deal for Bill Curry and his guys and then the primetime game 730 Eastern time Mike and I will be in Tallahassee Adrian of course will be with us and it is Florida State at NC State and I'm not sure the timing is real good for NC State to have to go to Tallahassee whoa you go back to the UCLA game Wayne Cook I believe is out the quarterback for UCLA I don't think he's playing tonight well, now there's been a timeout called by Louisville. We'll stay here, and uh, let's go down to Adrian Carson. Adrian? Ron, and answer the coach's situation here and what he's looking forward to, what they want to do. A&M now, depending on what the defense shows them, is a goal line sprint out. They're looking for their tight end at the back hey, of the end zone. Hey, hey. All right, we'll look for that. What Louisville was able to do on that play, they waited to Texas A&M, the old basketball trick. They waited for A&M to come out, show them the formation they were going to be in, called timeout so now they can try to figure out the play 14 to 7 Texas A&M leads 53 seconds left until halftime what a win for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish today that'll be one of the things that uh, we will have for you on the Delta Fawcett halftime report Lou Holtz and uh, and his guys getting a big win over number one Florida State. And Mike, I would have to think that you would just flip flop them. That as close as that football game was, that Florida State would drop no further than number two. Two very fine football teams. It was a good ball game. 
Casey Hammond company coming back on the field as the defensive unit trots back out for the Louisville Cardinals. Now Toledo, the offensive coordinator for Texas A&M, sends his charges uh, back out. So the Aggies still have one timeout left. Ball at the 12, and it's second down and 10. And that's a basketball play, Ron. You put it up for grabs, and Brian Mitchell just was able to out-muscle Anthony Bridges, number 21, for the touchdown. Tullius with the extra point attempt, trying to put the Yankees back on top by 14. And he's got it. Take one more look. As it looked like Pollock almost had rolled it too far, but then found his man in the end zone, and Mitchell, who was being defended closely, Comes away with the catch, and it is Texas A&M 21 to 7. Here's another look right here. Pulling with the pressure on him. Cavallo providing the the uh, pressure, and on the other end, Mitchell out battles Anthony Bridges for the touchdown. Big score for A&M because it was into the wind. That's right. First team to score it into the win. You know, Adrian talked about uh, in the quarter and what the, the Louisville coaches had said that probably most of the scoring, if not all of the scoring, would come with the win. So the Aggies, uh, as Mike points out, a, a very important one. See, Howard, that's one of the things coaches have to learn how to get the attention over the, the din. So he whistles through his teeth to holler at one of his players. I saw a yeah. feature story the other day of a coach who never hollers. He just whistles constantly at his players. He doesn't play in front of big crowds. Ron, now you have to think, if you're R.C. Slocum, you might want to think about the second half taking the win and try to finish him off in the third quarter. I mean, that's a thought now that I would give as I went to the locker room. If it's my choice, and I believe it is his choice, I might take the win in the third quarter and try to nail the coffin shut. shut. to get an aid to come up. Ray Mickens will come over to put a hand on the football to keep it from blowing off the tee. Bailey, the deep man. If the Trulius kicks it off at the Texas Aggies, they're up 21 to 7. Bailey from the 12. And let's check in with Mike Tarico. Mike, what do you have for us? A reminder, Ron, coming up on the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report, the showdown that lived up to the expectations. We'll tell you what the Miami coach thinks should happen in the polls after today's action. We'll look at the other bout could stay unbeaten. All that coming up at halftime. He's a good guy now, but his numbers weren't all that good. And the Rams, 42 points, the lowest of any team in the preseason. They averaged nine penalties per game in midseason four. Still to come, we've seen the Little Leaguers. It's time now to see the Minor Leaguers. And Michael steps up to the plate and goes down. History says this was a good day in Major League Baseball. Baseball. All you have to do is ask Ricky Henderson. And we're going to take you on a Saturday night spin back to Bristol after this. Looks like you're in the finals. Ma'am, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You're the defending ladies pool champion? Yes, I am. 
When we became environmentally sensitive in America and realized that we couldn't be a waste country anymore, we had to reuse what we have, and we got to use it over and over and over again, the logical place for LP to go was into reclaiming old newspaper. As we go in the direction of making products that are friendly to the environment, Now there's no sense now because it's only third down. Just let the clock run. But if the pass was incomplete, that would have killed that time. And then after third downs, when you use the timeout, but now you just let it go. Brom, flag comes down. Clock is run out, and he just throws it for all he's worth, and it's overthrown and incomplete. And let's see who the flag is against. Are we headed to halftime, or is uh, the penalty? against Texas A&M. It is personal foul holding. So that's the end of the first half with our score. Texas A&M 21 and Louisville 7. Stay tuned for the Delta Fawcett Halftime Report. To go down in the Louisville locker room this is what was being said. Go after them. We've got to believe in ourselves. Make it happen. Everybody look at everybody else and everybody look at yourself. Let whatever lives out there, let's go get it like you know how to get it. Jeff Brown is going to make some plays. Our wide receiver is going to make some plays. Our tight end is going to make some plays. Our running backs are going to make some plays. And our defense is going to come down with a big play that'll get this thing turned around, get us on the, on the move. So, just a couple of moments ago, Howard Schnellenberger uh, allowing our cameras in there, and you could hear part of his uh, halftime talk to the youngsters. And uh, essentially, got to make something happen. Mitchell to the left. Here's McElroy, number 34 to the right. And with the wind that is blowing, he did not have an opportunity on the last kick by Louisville. And I have a feeling he's not going to have an opportunity here because this wind is really beginning to gust. stats Ron of course I think the big thing for Louisville is 39 yards rushing the inability to run the football which is making them one dimensional in this ball game time of possession 17 13 so they've had time with the football key play was that fourth down play where they were uh, not able to hit Jamie Asher on fourth down he was wide open to keep that drive drive moving and uh, going for a score yeah that was probably the worst pass that uh, that he threw in that first 30 minutes of football. See the numbers on Pulling. 9 to 14, 84 yards, two touchdowns, and one interception. Greg Hill, big opening, and Bridges will step up to make the hit on him. Corey Pulling in the first half, and if you notice here to the right side, because he's a right-handed quarterback, a lot of play action where he's been able to dump the ball off to his fullback. In the foot in the first half Rodney Thomas number 20 for a lot of big plays six for six and a touchdown into the flat. See they pull the guard. Hill going to be hit and that's a 
nice job by Kevin Gaines as he fills nicely, and that play will go for nothing. You look in the first half, nothing for Texas A&M inside against Louisville. Eight carries for only 15 yards. They had some success on the outside, picking up 102 yards on the outside, nine carries. So here's the situation. It's third down, and for A&M to keep this drive alive, they're going to have to take it out to the 30. They lead 21 to 7. and he just missed him. Tony Harrison might have lost his footing, but they just missed connection there. As wide open as Tony Harrison was, he should have pulled up. Tony Harrison, number three, is wide open. He should have pulled up in that area and just made it an easy throw for Corey Pulling. This is the first time that we've seen James Bennett tonight. First punt by Texas A&M. Again, Louisville has to use the wind to their advantage here in the third quarter. Pressure coming after him, and look at the wind. Just take this punt and hold it up. Fair catch by Bailey, and he'll make it at the 43. 34 yards in the punt, and here are the numbers on Jeff Brom. We talked about him off the top of the telecast. Well, what about his first half? Well, the key for Bob Davey in the defense is not allowing many deep throws. He's 7 out of 16 for 73 yards and one big interception. And there is a flag at the 16-yard line. <laughs> the call run as the receiver came Went out of bounds out of and bounds. came back in. Late flag. Brian, illegal touching. A receiver went out of bounds, came in and first touched the ball. Penalty is lost and down. Tough thing about that play, two rounds of loss and down. Ralph Dawkins on the wheel route. You bring the back out in the flat, and all of a sudden you take him upfield against the linebacker, Steve Solari. Number 22, Ralph Dawkins going to fake like he's going outside. Now he breaks up the field against the linebacker, Steve Solari. And this is a mismatch in the favor of Louisville. But he went out of bounds. And, and he was not forced out. Not Had forced, he forced out. out he could... No one touched the ball mm -hmm. before he touched it. Well, Howard is out on the field by 10 yards. And you can understand why. You hit a home run, you get a call back. Make the screen to the left, and they throw it back to the right. Nobody is there, and that'll bring up a third down. And, Mike, here is a final score from the West Coast. Arizona State 9, UCLA 3. Tough loss for UCLA. Again, without their quarterback, Wayne Cook. Now Arizona State becomes alive for a bull bid. And Southern California is in, the in, uh, in a good position. Yes, they are. He was redirecting to the near side. Third down, and they need to take it to the AM 47. Brom zings it. Has it incomplete at the 35. Glenn defensively as Bailey had it go in and out of his hands. Aaron Glenn with a good defensive play. Aaron Bailey is going to go down and hook. Just run a short post and hook. The ball behind him a little bit. He almost had it on the re reflection, uh, the deflection. But again, Aaron Glenn with good coverage. There's Glenn who was involved in the deflection a moment ago. 
After you, have a, after you have a big defensive play, Ron, then sometimes you come back with a big punt return. Mm -hmm. Now this is the guy who can do it. But this one here is going to be all the way into the end zone. That's going to be a 57-yard kick. So let's take a break. 21 to 7, Texas A&M. You've never seen a camcorder like the Sharp View Cam. The viewfinder gone. Replaced with this LCD view screen. You're right in the action. Gretzky scores? Let's go to the replay. Then, play it back instantly with color and sound. Want to see that again? The Sharp View Cam. An absolute original. So your first goal, Ty. And birthdays, graduations, your wedding, your kids, my grandchildren. Football. Real football. And real grass. Lambeau Field in snow. Pack. No, no, no. Too obvious. What about the fearsome force? The purple people here. Carl Ellen. No name defense. The Oakland Raiders. Baltimore Colts. Hey, Mike Curtis. Ray Nitschke. Willie Lanier. Immaculate reception. Franco's Italian. Oh, a real fullback. Franco Harris, Marv Hubbard, take your pick. No, no. The snake to Clarence Davis, 26 seconds left. AFC semifinals versus Miami. Beachwood Age Budweiser. Chris Clinton, classic. drive 175 horsepower Isuzu Rodeo. It's a vehicle some of you have been waiting for for a long time. The Isuzu Rodeo, practically amazing. ESPN's presentation of CFA football is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of incredible four-wheel drives, and by Budweiser, fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. Some of the Corps of Cadets here at Texas A&M University. And our score is 21 to 7 with the Aggies on top. You know, Louisville came and played here at this stadium last year. And one of the things that Howard Snellberger said last night to us is that it helps to have been here once before to get a little bit of an idea of what to expect. Still doesn't make it easy. It is a tough place to play. ball game Mike didn't see him in the second quarter that I can recall and they've got him lined up at a receiver spot and still gets it to the outside it's going to be a gain of about seven and Cavallo is there to make the stop Ron you, I just can't emphasize enough what Howard Snellenberg has done with the Louisville program uh, in the local paper last week one of the newspapermen wrote that uh, they haven't beaten anybody but if you go back to 1985 when he took this job over they lost Eastern Kentucky by 24 points the program was down. He came in, and now this is a nationally known program. Beat Alabama in the Fiesta Bowl, going to the Liberty Bowl. I mean, this guy has done a tremendous job. Beat Texas at home. Uh, Arizona State and beat UCLA tonight. I just can't say enough about the job this man's done. You are exactly right. Hill, nothing there. Going to turn it back to the other direction. And we'll pick up maybe a yard on the play. Well, one of the things that has not gone his way, speaking of Howard Schnellenberg, and that is we asked him his thoughts on the coalition for the bowl games. I know it's uh, unfair and uh, it's a restraint of trade and it's probably uh, illegal. And uh, for that reason, uh, we felt we had to take the, the bid from the Liberty Bowl because if we went undefeated, and ended up uh, 10 and 1, we couldn't have gone to a more prestigious bowl than the Liberty Bowl. And that's not right for the kids to be saddled with that uh, from the time they come to the University of Louisville until they leave. Well, Mike, we're glad they're going to the Liberty Bowl. We had that bowl game uh, in Memphis, and we don't know who the opponent's going to be yet. We keep hearing inklings of an idea that it might be Michigan State of the Big Ten. I think it will be Michigan State, Ron, and I couldn't agree uh, more with Howard Snellenberg. And there's a state senator in uh, Kentucky, Mitch McConnell, who's taking it to the next Good. step uh, to the Justice, Justice Department, and they're going to give it a prompt review about this coalition so uh, there's a lot of people unhappy with the coalition Howard's not the only one first and ten the line of scrimmage is the 32 Thomas quick 
hitter, and he goes for six, maybe seven yards. Sumter finally puts a stop on him. Watson is also there. What R.C. Slocum would like to see is this clock disappear in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Just burn the time with the ball on the ground and then give me the ball with the fourth quarter in the wind. Well, he's got a situation with these running backs where he can do that. In fact, I was a little surprised in the second quarter when they were going into the win on that one drive uh, after they had scored that, that they threw the ball as much as they did. <laughs> Running play. Uh, trap block didn't get there. Going to be a gain of one, and that's all. Ron, the other thing about Louisville, they finally now have talked Kentucky into playing them, and they're going to open next year. And when you look at where this program again has come to, they're going to build their own stadium. And, uh, they told me that there's 15 million dollars been raised from, by the fans uh, in uh, the state of Kentucky to build a new facility. So it's just come a long way in Louisville since the Lee Corso days and Frank Camp, uh, two outstanding coaches. And they're looking at what two years away from now for the uh, stadium to be done. going to be enough for the first down. And Adrian Karsten, what do you have? Well, you mentioned the success of Coach Snellenberger, and really very impressive. But who taught him to teach some of the guys that he has taught? At Kentucky, Blanton Collier, whom he worked with in 59 and 60. Off to Tuscaloosa with a bear influenced him for four years. In Los Angeles in the late 60s, the late George Allen had him on the staff. And in his days with the Dolphins, he coordinated the 1972 offense that still is the only undefeated NFL team in history, Ron. Yep, that's... Uh... I saw that football team uh, play and, and win over the Minnesota Vikings. Larry Zonka and company, that was, that was an awesome group. Hill, counter trade the other direction, and here he goes. Greg Hill has the first down. It's going to be a gain of 12 on first down. And the big thing right now, and Mike, you have to wonder, if 12 yards on first down here on this running play, if maybe that Louisville defense is tiring just a little bit. Well, it's, it's hammer time now because this is what AM does best, run the football. Good blocking by Jason Matthews, number 67. But when you alternate backs, keep them fresh, you got that big offensive line there, 289, 267, 268, 285, 260 across the front. And now they're trying to hammer Louisville. Gilman Thomas in the backfield again. And they fake the play and Bullock falls down. Now he kicked the ball out of his own hand. The ball is dead at the 47-yard line. But they faked the play that they were successful with a moment ago, and they're going to wind up losing about eight yards. Big loss, too, because they've had success running the football. Now the little fake trying to get Corey Pulling outside. He just trips and falls down, and ball's dead, but a big loss forcing them into a second and 18. As you look at Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator. Looks as though he might have gotten his feet tangled with Greg Hill as he went by him after the fake. 7.55 remaining, third quarter. A&M 21, Louisville 7. That's the gross, the fullback. Flip makes the turn, and he'll take it to the 42. Well, he's playing on an injured ankle, but it didn't look as though it was that sore on that play. Made a good cut. Good pickup. Now you have to think it's third down. Now they're back in rhythm again. Now you're third and seven. Corey Pulling runs the screen pass extremely well. Would, would be a good call right now. 11 out of 17, 97 yards, two touchdowns. Third and seven's a good screen down. You could see that they had walled off everybody else, but Johnson continued to work, and it's a loss of 10. Well, Joe Johnson just didn't beat one block. He's going to beat two blocks. They tried to double him with the tackle, Dexter Wesley, number 75, and the fullback. Joe Johnson just beat both of them, sacked Corey Pulling for a big play. Coming after the 
putter Bennett wins going to hold this one up. Knuckleball as Bailey calls for a fair catch. And let's take a break. 6-17 left of the third quarter. We'll be right back. It takes you to another level. You feel like you're floating on air. The competition is so thick and so tight that you can cut it with a knife. National championship game between one and two is nothing compared to this. Well, it's the battle for supremacy between Texas and Texas A&M. The 100th meeting between those two schools, and we'll be right back here in College Station uh, 11 nights from now to, uh, to bring that to you on Thanksgiving evening. So you can uh, digest your turkey and sit down and enjoy what is always a very competitive football game. Brown fakes the run out of the shotgun. Now throws it incomplete, and Dawkins was well covered. Mike, I mentioned earlier that Brom, one of the things that the coaches said that they had to work long and hard, he was such a good runner in high school, and he would take off and run. They won a state championship his senior year, but they said you got to stay in the pockets. you got to learn how to either throw from the shotgun or with a seven-step drop, and he has worked very hard on both and uh, has really improved with that. Drills this one, and it's intercepted by Glenn. Touchdown, Andy. point by Venetulius knocks it home it's the second interception by Glenn of the season the first for a touchdown for a and 28 to 7 now with the defensive score by Texas a and m Bob Davey talks about Aaron Glenn he said he may be the best corner we've ever had here at Texas a and m but he makes a great break on the ball ball thrown see the break he steps in front of the receiver the junior college transfer who played his first game against Stanford in the opener a year ago. Well, Brom now with two interceptions. And Mike, a little bit in his defense. If Cook had felt the defensive back, he would have taken a step toward his quarterback and could have alleviated possibility that ball being picked off, let alone a touchdown coming. Good interception. It really was. Boy, he broke on it nicely. Again, the win. We talked about it all night. Another score for a and m into the teeth of the win. This one on the ground. Bailey still can't corral it. Does it to 17, and then is knocked down immediately. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? The way the Aggies are playing right now in special teams, particularly on defense, Ron, with that last touch on, direct result of a challenge that came out of their locker room at halftime. Sam Adams, new leader of the wrecking crew. Well, to use his words, he said, guys, let's spit into the win and score this quarter. Well, they did just that. By the way, uh, Adrian, it, Glenn likes ESPN because I said this is his second interception this year, the first for the Aggies for a touchdown. Remember, he had an interception return against Texas last year, 95 yards. So, uh, he has done well when our cameras have been around. Pumps it, now flips it out to Shelman. Shelman puts a head down, and he'll pick up a couple. Now with a 21-point lead, a and can afford now to bring in the nickel back Steve Kinney and just leave him on the field not substituting just leave number 36 on the field with the extra defensive back against the no huddle well, the pocket to this side this time going to go 
for Bailey, and it's just beyond his reach. It was Mickens who had the cover for Texas A&M. You watch Ray Mickens, number 24, in the back pedal. He didn't really bite on the out route by Aaron Bailey, but he's still... Aaron Bailey's still behind Ray Mickens, just the throws over his head. Well, Mickens had the cover. Mike, it's been very tough to throw on these corners from Texas A&M, hasn't it? There's a grab out at the 34 as Cook makes the reception on that one. So Mickens is out, and Mitchell comes in replacing him as you look at Mickens on the near sideline as they're attending to him. Sophomore out of El Paso Andrus High School. Mike, the yards that Louisville picked up just a moment ago, the first positive yards that they have got in this third quarter. They still got plenty of time, though, with 5-12 left and the wind at their back. Shellman with the running play going to be belted by Larry Jackson. Defense of A&M has so much quickness. Linebackers can run, and they've got the full force up inside. Number 37, Larry Jackson, a linebacker. The left linebacker just steps up, beats, goes underneath the block. Ralph Dawkins ran by him, and he made the tackle on Anthony Shellman. As you see Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator. Intercepted by Atkinson. He got a hit from behind by England, and the ball almost went into Jason Atkinson's hand. And Jason Atkinson was certainly surprised because he was so close to Jeff Brom. Never expected probably that football was going to come to him. Good pressure by Eric England, number 92. Number 43, Jason Atkinson. All of a sudden ready to break down. He just didn't have his hands up ready to make the catch. Surprise. Mike, we mentioned that UCLA has already been upset uh, out west by Arizona State. How about as the scorers came in there just a moment ago? Uh, Wyoming being knocked off by New Mexico today. The driver's seat in the whack now is Lavelle Edwards and the BYU Cougars. Brown has hit only four of his last 14 passes. Throws it complete. And again, Dawkins is hit immediately this time, Steve Kennedy. That's the ability of AM to bring in the nickel back. Now, when you have a 21 point lead, you just leave him on the field. You have the extra defensive back. Steve Kenny makes the play. Brookfield to punt it away with the wind at his back. He had a 57 yarder, you remember, with the wind in that second quarter. And Glenn had done a pretty good job of keeping it away from him tonight. It away from him, bounds at the five and goes into the end zone. So coming up next Saturday here on ESPN, this is what the schedule looks like. We'll start off in the afternoon at Commonwealth Stadium in Lexington, Tennessee, number six of the nation, taking on the Kentucky Wildcats. And then the primetime game, we will be in Tallahassee, Florida, North Carolina State at Florida State. That is 7.30 Eastern time. So Tennessee, Kentucky, and NC State and Florida State are doubleheader for next weekend. I'd say Kentucky's in a little bit of trouble with Tennessee. I think they're 34 and 1 since 1984 in the month of November. Pretty good record. You know, Mike, and I'm not so sure. Doesn't count if you've already lost and have a tie, though. But Tennessee probably is playing best of anybody in the Southeastern Conference now. Two, three, four plays away from being undefeated. Mm -hmm. They really are. second tackler Darius Watson but it's going to be a gain of eight yards and the Aggies in the second half have really done a good job in first down they have played a lot with second and short then a smash mouth football game for AM on offense in the third quarter all running ability to run the football control the clock 
McElroy comes in the ball game again, and he's lined up bottom of your screen. You see number 34 there as a receiver. He had a screen the last time in that set. Thomas bounces outside. Flag comes down. He'll have the first down. Gaines comes up to make the hit. Now let's see what this flag is about. Holding AM. Holding on the offense. We'll repeat second down. Twenty-eight to seven, Texas A&M leads, and the last touchdown that they got came here in the third quarter from the defense. Aaron Glenn with an interception, taking it forty yards for the score. Come to the sideline. I'm not sure he knows where he is right now. Well, Ty Smith, the defensive coordinator, told me Anthony Bridges, after a play's over, he can tell you where every receiver's at, and he knows where Leland McElroy is on this play. Wow, what a hit. But he said he's a coach on the field. Number 21, Anthony Bridges. Now the red shirt freshman. Strange ways of getting an education. That is part of his education right there. Well, that wasn't really his fault. Thomas is going to be stopped before he gets back to the line of scrimmage, and they'll have to punt it away. Time of possession in this quarter, Mike. This is what the doctor ordered for R.C. Slocum. A&M, 1049, and Louisville only 313. So they only had it for 313 with the wind at their back, and there's only a minute 20 to go in this quarter. Now Bailey with another opportunity. You go after the kick here if you're Louisville. You try to block this one because it shouldn't travel far enough to get a good return, so you go for the block. But you have to wait till the ball is snapped. <laughs> one of the little intricacies of the, ball, of the uh, game Un of football. Unless a and jumped. Mm -hmm. Rico Clark looked as though he was the man that jumped across number one. That, I think it's going to be called on Dead the ball, illegal procedure on the offense. And that's the reason Rico came Still early. 60 seconds exactly left in the third quarter. Now you go after it again, Ron. Fourth and long yardage, fourth and 16. You sell out to block this kick. James Bennett now standing at his own goal line. He lays a spiral. Bailey from the 48. Gets by one, but boy, he will not get by the second wave. It's a 33-yard kick. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten again. Ron, a player for all college football fans to keep their eyes on. Number 60, a long snapper for Texas A&M. His name is Dale Red. Could be the best in the nation at what he does. Long snaps, and that's all he does. Look at him, hesitate. Now, head downfield in coverage. In three years, never had a single bad snap. And with coverage like that, look at that. One of the reasons A&M only averages or gives up a total of 2.8 yards on an average punt return. 200 snaps every single day in summer practice. <laughs> Spoken like a true long snapper. <laughs> and Adrian, he told me, by the way, that his key to success is he doesn't, he doesn't overload with barbecue. Like our long snapper does, right? <laughs> rolls the pocket to the left wants to throw back a screen and there's nobody there wanted to go to a tight end James Asher on the screen he just I think he just threw it away because there were too many 
A&M shirts right there in the middle of the group. Tackleman and then, uh, Sam Adams speaking of two. You know who really has not been a big factor in this game and he has in every game they played is Dawkins. With exception of the one play, he got loose on that he had stepped out of bounds and it, it cost him a touchdown. They doubled him a lot, Ron. And the other thing is Antonio Shorter. Now this becomes his type of game. Number 56 for the pass rush. 44 seconds left in the third quarter. Pass complete and they get it to Asher. <laughs> Mickens is there to make the stop and clock coming down. This may be the last play of the third quarter, so the last time his club will have it with the wind in this game. Kenny checks in, so they get the extra defensive back into the game, and Eric England comes to the sideline. Running play, Dawkins. Hit and goes inside the 40. Steve Kenny, who just checked in, and that'll do it. That's the end of the third quarter. So let's take a break as we head to the final 15 here at College Station. Aggies by 21. Home fans here at College Station, Texas, and why not? 28 to 7. Their Aggies have uh, have led this one all the way. Jumped out in front 14 to nothing in the first quarter and looked as though they might make a route of it. Then the Cardinals came back after an interception and put it in the end zone to cut it to 14 to 7. But aided by a defensive score and a good drive into the win, and the Aggies now on top by 21. Fourth down. Brom puts an air under this one and has it complete. Cook at the 20, and then he gets stood up hard. Oh, my goodness. That's quite a hit by Hendricks. 24 yards, though, and a first down by the Cardinals. Well, Kevin Cook, when you talk to the Louisville coach, is Gary Nord said he's our possession receiver. Number five. So on fourth down against Aaron Glenn, number 31, Jeff Brom is able to put the ball right on the money. Running play, and Fritz Patrick bumped out of bounds by Larry Jackson. Let's see, they're going to spot him at the 13. Chris Fitzpatrick's brother coaches for the University of Houston. Tony Fitzpatrick played nose guard for Howard in Miami. Texas A&M winning first downs, 14 out of 20 with four downs or more. Four yards or more. Kevin Cook, senior out of Columbus, Ohio. Brown looks up at the clock. Plenty of time at the 25 second clock. Wants to throw the ball, hit, it's loose, and that is advanceable. Now has been kicked. Picked up by A&M's Antonio Shorter, and he is down to the Louisville 40-yard line. One of the receivers they were going to try to throw the football to is Jeff Brown. Ralph Dawkins, who can throw the football, just didn't have the time, and Louisville commits their third turnover. It was Hendricks who made the hit, Mike. Jeff Brown, after he gives the football up, is going to be a pass receiver. There's Michael him. Hendricks, number 40, with the hit. See, Shorter waits to take it on the short hop, so to speak, and look who made the tackle. Number 11, Jeff Brown. Good pressure by Michael Hendricks. Nice call by Bob Davey, the defensive coordinator. in the I formation, but they throw it. And it's complete to Tony Harrison. And now here comes the flag. Harrison with the completion, and I think that uh, Gaines must have grabbed his face mask because Brom is trying to walk it off over on the sideline after making the tackle on Shorter to keep him from scoring. That's, that's the call. Face mask against Louisville. Adrian, let's uh, get a report from you. It's his left knee, the injury to Jeff Brom when he tried to make up for that mistake. And 
actually come down and make the tackle. Whether he comes back in on the next offensive series is yet to be determined, Ron. Backup is Marty Lowe, a sophomore. We talked about him winning the state championship. He played for Trinity High School in Louisville, and his brother was a receiver that went to Louisville. Well, Hendricks is a man that started the whole thing as you look at Brom. And as far as, as Lowe is concerned, he does get a considerable number of snaps in practice because Brom has class that takes him out of one full practice one day a week. Thomas, big opening. 10-5, touchdown AM. Big block by Greg Short, number 86. And then once you get the running back Rodney Thomas gone, it's tough to stop. He ran right through Anthony Bridges, number 21. And fans here like to score because they always kiss after a touchdown, right? You, you I see so many people. That's right. I see so many people kissing around here. I you wonder why, but it's after all the touchdowns they score. That's here. exactly right. It was lost. As long as that practice doesn't move up to the booth. It won't. <laughs> Good snap, but Atulius has the extra point. So with 13.55 left in the ballgame, new score. Aggies 35, Louisville 7. Welcome back to College Station, Texas. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Karsten. A young man who could become a member of the 12th man here at uh, Texas A&M. Enjoying what he's seeing tonight is over on the Louisville bench. We mentioned off the top of the telecast that uh, this might not be a good time to come to town because the Aggies lost a place in the standings when they didn't play. Uh, they're looking for respect and just looking for an example. And right now they're up 35 to 7 over a good Louisville team. Schnellenberger continues to pace on that far sideline. Mike, we were just talking during the timeout that Louisville on their way to losing the third game of the season, but the teams that they're going to wind up losing to have a pretty good cumulative record. If you're a Louisville fan, you shouldn't let this loss diminish anything uh, hopes as far as this ball club because they've lost to West Virginia. Zero losses for West Virginia. Tennessee might well be one of the four best teams in the country. And Texas A&M only has one loss. So when you play that tight schedule and you play them on the road, it's difficult. But this Louisville program has nothing to be ashamed of. Sam Adams, he breaks off the tackle of Adams. Now throws. It is tipped and intercepted. Billy Mitchell at the 10, and he's down to the 5. First and goal, Texas A&M. Sam Adams made that play, Ron, because he pressured Jeff Brown. Billy Mitchell with the interception, number 22. He looked like a running back once he got the football. Sam Adams was the player that made this happen. Number 95 with pressure. He beats the block of Jermaine Williams. Jeff Brown now on the run. Throws the ball through the hands of a receiver. Tip, number 22, Billy Mitchell. Then becomes a pretty good running back. Another score to update you on that the North Carolina team that we saw last week now up 28 to 10 over Tulane at the end of three quarters. And by the way, Clemson today. How about the Tigers? A big win over Virginia. Virginia's always had problems with Death Valley. Makes the run. Flag is down. Pass thrown complete. And touchdown, Texas AM. Now let's see if McKeon will be given the touchdown or not. Question I have for you, Ron, being a Texas uh, person here. Do they kiss before the penalty is decided or not? I'm sure that they everyone takes advantage of the situation as long as they can. So 
McKeon is given Pettit for the touchdown. He is a junior out of Willis, Texas, 6'4", 231. See, this guy said they didn't get it on camera, so let's do it again. Well, he said, hey, there's a penalty. Let me kiss you before, and as soon as we get him, we'll kiss him. Well, they, on games that are going to be high scoring, they sell a lot of lip ice around here. I'll tell you a lot of chap is, lips. You want to come to a game with a date. Venetulius, and he's been very busy in the last few moments. We'll take a break. 42 to 7, Texas A&M. are some interesting scenarios out there and a, a couple of surprises that we've talked about one that as you mentioned UCLA they lose their quarterback and lose the ball game to the Sun Devils Wyoming that gets beat so that throws a wrinkle in to that conference race Adrian uh, what do you have for us talking about Sam Adams the foreman of the wrecking crew Ron take a look at the pressure he puts on the quarterback to force the interception which eventually will set up the touchdown he has actually redesigned the scheme of this defense it used to be to keep all the pressure off the linebackers but because of his size and his speed and his quickness he's become one of college football's final four to be named the best lineman in college football backing him up perhaps in second position Derek Brooks had the ankle injury today needs a big game in our game next week against NC State Rob Waldrip, Arizona's outstanding nose guard. Well, Bill Walsh called him one of the best in the nation, if not the best. And Aaron Taylor in their win today against FSU. Notre Dame becomes number one. Taylor, one of the big reasons the Irish rush for over 270 a game. This is Shellman with the big run. And number seven, Matty Lowe, Mike, is at quarterback. So I don't know if that means that uh, the Jeff Brahms uh, knee is is worse than we had thought or just the fact that with the ball game and the shape it's in that Marty Lowe will get an opportunity to play. Anyway, well, if, he, if there's anything wrong with Jeff Brown you take him out now because down 42 7 you got that pass rush coming after you rest your first team quarterback. Shelman again and a big gainer off the right side and in fact across midfield. Junior White comes up to make the tackle. You mentioned Marty Lowe is a sophomore out of Chattanooga, and he gets a lot of opportunities in practice simply because of the class schedule of Jeff Braun. There's one day that uh, Jeff can't be there, so he gets the workout uh, and the reps at quarterback. The reason for the big cheer is the rain started coming down really hard, and then all of a sudden it just ended. So the crowd is up, and they're cheering everything tonight. Coming up next, college football scoreboard show. Hendricks on Shellman as he comes up and puts a headgear on him. Jeff Brom on the sideline, and it looks as though that they have just decided that it is an opportunity for Lowe to get some snaps and uh, get some game competition. They were never able to get their running game going tonight, so they never really could keep the AM defense off balance. Dawkins is going to be slung down hard by Sam Adams at the line of scrimmage. We have checked on the bench, and they say it has nothing to do with the injury. They just want Lowe to get some game experience. And Marty Lowe's the quarterback next year for Louisville when they come back in next season. And I think their first game is Kentucky. They've done a nice job in Louisville matching Kentucky. Now they're winning battles in recruiting. That game, I think, is going to be a Commonwealth Stadium, isn't it? They'll talk a lot about that one through the summer. Lowe sings the pass incomplete. Aaron Glenn was the closest person to it. Talk about the differences in the program, Ron. I think that Louisville's been on television seven times. I believe Texas A&M's been on 78 times, so... Just gives you an idea where they're coming hey, from. Try, try not to cash you up. Get ready to catch it. Get ready to catch it. Well, the running game, Mike talked about it. A couple of numbers here that as soon as this punt is done, uh, we'll, we'll give you. Uh, the two, and they can't get it. So it's touchback, and 
Let's take a break. 11:27 left of the ball game. All Texas A&M. There's a timeout on the field. A&M Consolidated, which is uh, right here in Bryan College Station area, and he'll have McElroy and Smith behind him. McElroy with a handoff. Lines to the outside. Has five, eight, and nine yards as Bridges knocked his feet out from under him. So let's put a period on Corey Pullen. His number is 14 of 20, 118 yards, three touchdowns tonight, and he did have the one interception as there is a flag down at the 31. Talked about the running game of Louisville tonight while Jeff Brown was quarterbacking on 28 running attempts. They gained 23 yards. Well, that Dead makes ball. it extremely difficult. Personal foul. Defense. First down. Residents in college football scoreboard, and that is coming up next immediately after our ball game. Maybe 11 15 to play. a nice open field tackle by Bridges and you can see that flag come airborne from over on the near side of the field. And it's going to be holding against the Aggies. One of the things about Preston Pullock went down with a knee injury in the spring so he got a lot of uh, reps this spring. He got a lot of playing time and he has a very strong arm throws the ball well and uh, has some very good mobility. Tommy is uh, getting an opportunity to play tonight with his football team on top by a count of 42 to 7. Next Saturday in the Holy afternoon. Man. Offense. Can you Can you know? Know? Next Saturday afternoon, it will be Tennessee at Kentucky, and then the primetime game is from Tallahassee, North Carolina State at Florida State. Ron, with that penalty now, Texas A&M will be first down and 19 yards to go. his intended receiver. Good hit by Anthony Bridges. Again, number 21. Right on the spot. He would play number 85 as the intended pass receiver. Anthony Bridges, a tough corner. 5'9", 165. Seven interceptions this season. complete and then the hit is made and it's going to be to the 40 yard line and it'll be a third down and AM still needs about 14 yards to pick up the first to Smith and circled out of the backfield for the reception. And Johnny Frost the middle linebacker read the play from the start and was right there to make the tackle on Smith the fullback. Was it a forward pass or what? Picked up by Smith. Neutron Smith will take it to midfield. Will not be enough for the first down, but it's Joe Johnson who hit him from behind and knocked the ball loose. Well, that's the kind of night it's been for Louisville. Joe Johnson with a big play, number 94. Sacks the quarterback, knocks the ball to Tommy Preston's hands. Good pass rush by Joe Johnson. He just never gives up. Now causes the fumble, but the way the bounces have gone tonight for AM, it bounces right to Detron Smith, number 44, and he picks up yardage. So James Bennett with an opportunity to punt with the wind for a change. 
can see a few umbrellas uh, still in existence here as the sprinkles have started again. Good hanging kick will bound at the 10, and Aggies can't get there. It'll be touched back and back to the 20. Well, this is what's on schedule for tomorrow. NFL game day begins at noon Eastern time. No Sunday is complete without it. And tomorrow's top stories, rookie versus veteran. New star, Willie Roth of the Saints. And his biggest test, well, he'll go up against Reggie White. And then a veteran quarterback released this past week. We'll visit Cleveland and find out why they let Bernie Kosar go. Then NFL primetime, 7 o'clock Eastern time. All the day scores and highlights, including second place Raiders beating the front running Chiefs in the AFC. West. And then tomorrow evening, it's the Bears and the Chargers. 8 o'clock Eastern Time. That is our full Sunday schedule here on ESPN. Breaks it out over the 30-yard line. That's going to be a gain of close to 10 on the play as Kenny is there defensively. You look at a couple. You look at a score there. Youngstown State, the leading team in Division One AA, falls, and Marshall, the number two team, gets beat. But Ron, two big plays: the fourth down play in the first half, where they overthrew the ball to Jamie Arch Asher. That was one, and then the second play where Ralph Dawkins was out of bounds and came back in and uh, made the catch. Two big plays that went against Louisville. Boy, are you right? Because momentum-wise, the Lost the it. long strike to uh, to Dawkins could have been huge in this game as far as momentum. Dawkins this time goes for a short one. Here's another update out west: Fresno State 42 to seven over Hawaii, and that's with 3:27 left in the third. I thought after your game on Thursday night that there were no touchdowns left in that conference, but <laughs> well, Lavelle Edwards is sitting home tonight. And he has to have a smile on his face because with Wyoming going to New Mexico and losing, he, he is in great shape to win the WAC and make a trip to the Holiday Bowl. And he lost four games in a row. So all of a sudden, BYU is back. And Howard Snellenberger is looking forward to the Liberty Bowl. Had a fine season, tough night tonight. When he took the job, Ron, they interviewed him and said, how long do you think it's going to take to get this program back? He said, 15 years. <laughs> First guy I've ever seen say 15 years. Usually you say five, four. And Howard has a good record. He said 15 years, and he's brought this program back a lot quicker than 15 years. But the thing that you also have to do, I mentioned that uh, he, he said his players know college station because they were here last year. Well, when you come to a place like this to play two years in a row, there's a pretty good percentage that you're going to come away with two losses because this is a, an extremely tough last week 96 97 thousand in Knoxville to play an awfully good Tennessee team but that's what you have to do when you're in the process of getting that program to another plateau Louisville's done a good job their basketball uh, program uh, their athletic director Bill Olson of trading basketball games teams would call over and say we want to play in basketball he'd say okay we're playing basketball but you're going to play us in football also well, and that's that's how they got their schedule, Ron. I mean, they were able to put people on the schedule. Isn't it hunting season in this? Yeah, deer season. Uh, Hunt Cardinal tonight, but I mean it is hunting season. He said that they thought the crowd would be down tonight, and he said why, and he said hunting season. But I don't think anybody went hunting tonight, except on the field. There are a few that are watching this game from uh, hunting cabins around this state. I would imagine, Mike, this off the side of the foot. But you're right; it doesn't look like too many did, and uh, they hunted Cardinals extremely well tonight. By the way, we mentioned early on in the telecast that uh, R.C. Slocum in the morning with an administrative group from Texas A&M will hop on a plane and fly to Kansas City and uh, go in front of the NCAA. Uh, and, you know, this has been hanging around now for 11 months at this school. And with the fate of this program actually uh, in, in jeopardy, I guess you'd have to say, uh, you know, winning, R.C. says, has become secondary. And we'll, we'll get that interview here in just a second after they run this first play. 
straight ahead with Smith. And he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And here's a part of that interview that uh, we shot yesterday. The one thing that I had taken the most pride in, and I think our people had, is that we were winning, but we were winning the right way and winning uh, by the rules. So, uh, still to me, the winning doesn't uh, winning this season uh, doesn't uh, do it all for for me and and for uh, the people that are closely associated with him. Uh, uh, this has overshadowed the winning, I would say. Uh, you know, the old thing of just win, everything be okay. Uh, that, that's that's not true at all. Uh, to me. Uh, Winning and having some dignity about the way you win, uh, that means a whole lot. So in the morning, uh, RC and uh, the group from Texas A&M will, will journey up to Kansas City. The most difficult thing about this, Mike, is the fact that 11 months is an awfully long time for this thing to have been drawn out. And it seems like rather than talk about football at every media day, uh, before every football game and after, it's still, it was there. And it's been present for the players as well. The suspensions have been served. The players have paid back the money. Cotton Bowl rings were taken away. Uh, but was there lack of institutional control is one of the things that uh, they have to explain tomorrow to the NCAA, which could cost them scholarships and, uh, I mean, they could get a probation out of it. The pass is complete at the 46. As a coach, Ron, you do everything in your power to run it the right way and within the rules. And that's the frustration that R.C. Slocum's talking about. He feels like he has done that. He has run the program the right way. So we'll see what happens. You know, one of the things that has been difficult in living in this part of the country for almost 25 years is this conference has undergone the tightest scrutiny. They have been under a microscope for as long as I can remember down here. Part of it has been brought on by themselves, but the other part, I just, it is extremely difficult. As the corner is turned and he's down to the 35, and now the 34 yard line. But I guess the point that I'm making, I don't think that college football is rotten by any means, but I can promise you this. If the rest of college football was put under the same microscope by the media and by the NCAA that the Southwest has been under, I think there'd be a few more victims. And sometimes I wonder, you know, how far things should go because there are now eight professional teams in this state. And when Southwest Conference teams get publicity, it's not always positive by any shape of the imagination. Every Saturday night, you and I look at rosters and their kids from Texas who are key players on other rosters. And they're leaving because of the name. That's a great move by McElroy as he'll take it to the 21-yard line. Tamalo comes over to make the stop. Well, getting back to football, Leland McElroy, R.C. Slocumson, reminds him a lot of Marshall Falk out at uh, San Diego State. Said he's built like him. He feels like he runs like him. Anthony Bridges misses the tackle, number 21, but Leland McElroy makes him miss. One thing happened to Leland tonight that he will put in his uh, in his uh, notebook and that's he got a headgear in the in the ear hole earlier that, that sent him to the sidelines. It was okay obviously but there's something you have to learn. This is Wallace the ball carry. He gets tripped up as he tries to make the turn and maybe a gain of one. Here are the numbers on the three running backs, Hill, Thomas, and McElroy. 18 carries for Hill, 12 for Thomas, and 8 for McElroy. Wallace again as the coach is trying to get a look-see at him, and he's going to lose yardage. Gaines grabs him around the ankles, and we are now under five minutes left in the ballgame. Another fine play by Joe Johnson, the outstanding defensive end of Louisville. He just continues to play. Ty Smith, the defensive coordinator, said just he can be as good as he wants to be. 6'3", 250. Thomas and Hill standing together on the sideline. Their work is done for the evening. Oh my goodness. Had his opportunity there. And Clay 
was open and the ball sailed just a bit. He just got a little excited when he looked up and saw Hayward play number 85 running free <laughs> and just put too much underneath it. So on the left side of the offensive line, there was movement as well. I would think RC feels like he's had enough. Dead ball, ball starts, offense, still fourth down. Three thirty six left to play, A and M forty two to seven. Running play and Wallace breaks one tackle. And now it's going to be finished off at the twenty nine. Cavallo is the man who makes the stop, and the Louisville Cardinals will take it over. And Louisville has a player down at the 31. Around the Coast Guard Academy won 31 to 23 today, which is like the Army Navy game for the Coast Guard. They beat Kings Point 31 23 and a big win for the Coast Guard Academy under Bill Smith. Two players shaken up Frost and also Roscoe. So let's take a timeout. 328 left to play. Tonight's visa players of the game are from Louisville. Anthony Bridges 11 tackles eight of those solo and for Texas A&M it is Aaron Glenn one interception and he scored on that as a part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics visa proud to donate one thousand dollars to each of these universities and one thousand dollars to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Coming up immediately following the ball game, the residents in college football scoreboard. <laughs> Oklahoma with a big win today over cross state rival Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State has been a while since they have won in Norman. Oklahoma with the big game remaining with Nebraska. Mm -hmm. Calvin Arrington, the ball carrier now, as both clubs beginning to substitute beyond what our depth chart has uh, has been showing, giving them an opportunity to play tonight in a game that is uh, over for all intents and purposes. Uh, three minutes is what we have left. season versus Tulsa at Tulsa on November 25th Texas A&M of course plays at TCU on the 20th and then we're back here for the shootout with John Makovic in Texas on November 25th Jeff Brom standing on the sideline Mike he got the extra year you did that ball game against Tennessee he broke his leg what? broke his leg uh, unfortunate but well, I like him I like his chances mm -hmm. to, to go in the NFL as you look at the defensive coaches of AM. You saw Sam Adams uh, on the sideline getting a well deserved rest, one of the four finalists for the Lombardi Award uh, down in Houston to be given later. Now, if Texas comes in on Thanksgiving night and beats AM, 
Still third down. Do they win the Southwest Conference? They knock them off in head to head competition, and Texas has one conference loss. They still have Bader to play, though. There's still okay. some water yeah, to go hit, under the bridge yeah. yet. But one of those teams will be eliminated from bowl competition next week, either Baylor or Texas. So uh, they can't be thinking about AM. Patterson, the ball carrier, going to be hit in the backfield and knocked down. It's fourth down. Texas does have to win out to go to a bowl game because yes. they won't have enough wins unless they win out. Right. We spanked TCU today. Brookfield kick it away to Billy Mitchell this time. It's a good kick into the wind. Takes a big Louisville bounce and is going to go down to the 20-yard line. It takes you to another level. You feel like you're floating on air. The competition is so thick and so tight that you can cut it with a knife. National championship game between one and two is nothing compared to this. Sam Adams, who's a junior, talking about the rivalry with the Texas Longhorns, the 100th meeting. And we will be here at Kyle Field and College Station a week from Thursday evening, Thanksgiving night, for that matchup. How many of those 100 of you have uh, been uh, in attendance? <laughs> Quite a few. 50, 60? <laughs> <laughs> Not that many. Ah! Shane Anthony, the ball carrier there. Number 10, Stormy Case, who holds an extra points and field goals, has come into the lineup at quarterback, and he's getting an opportunity. As the clock runs down to 37, and now 36. Side, doesn't get out of bounds, and that probably will be the final play of this ball game. Howard Schnellenberger heading to the middle of the field for a handshake with R.C. Slocum. Two seconds down to one, and that's it from Kyle Stadium in College Station, Texas, with the final score, Texas A&M 42 and Louisville 7. From Mike Godfrey to Adrian Preston and our entire ESPN crew, this is Rob Franklin saying good night, everybody. The College Football School Board is next. <laughs>